Are you going to sit there nicely? How long for? 30 seconds. <laughs> She's already chewing something and causing havoc. What have you got? Uh, that's my camera lens. Is she joking? Are you joking? This is why you don't come upstairs, hon. Come on, Mrs. Mop. Let's get you downstairs. Come on. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my first video of 2023. It feels very weird actually sitting back down and filming. One, because I'm on a new camera and two, because it's been so long. It's been like five, six months since I last uploaded. So in that time, I've had a few new people subscribe. So I thought that doing a Q&A is a nice way of me easing myself in, but it's a good way for you to get to know me if you are new. And it's a good way for us to catch up if you are like already existing and you've watched some of my stuff before. I asked for some questions over on Instagram and quite a lot of the same questions came up from a video that I did around this time last year actually. Um, but the circumstances have changed quite a lot because life for me has changed quite a lot in the tw last 12 months and what I'm willing to show and talk about has changed as well. So I thought, why not sit down with a cup of tea? Tom's working away and it is Valentine's Day. Hence why me and Connie have got matching Valentine's jumpers on. It's actually Connie's third birthday today, so we're celebrating Valentine's together. If anything that I talk about in this video raises any questions, then just leave them down in the comments below or send me a DM on Instagram. It's the same name as my YouTube channel. And um, yeah, I wouldn't mind doing a part two to this video. I love sitting down and doing chatty videos. When I've scanned through some of the questions that have come through, I don't know where it's going to go. I've not kind of planned how I'm going to answer those questions, but I will be touching on grief in this video and um, talking a little bit about infertility as well. So if they are like upsetting subjects that you don't really want to see today, then that's absolutely fine. I'll leave some of my other videos in the description so you can go and have a look at something a bit more lighthearted. So yeah, I'm on peppermint tonight and I'm just going to jump straight to the questions. So the question just says, babies question mark um and I'll answer this really openly and honestly because I ended up saying it in a live on Instagram a couple of weeks ago even though hardly anybody who knew me knew this uh news um only my very very close family knew I froze my eggs back in 2016 before I started my cervical cancer treatment and we managed to get seven eggs from then onwards it's always been in the back of my mind. My seven little eggs are in a freezer in Manchester. When am I going to use them? And how am I going to go about this? And what's going to be the right way? I really put so much thought into it. I can't tell you. Um, it really wasn't a rush decision. And, and at that time, I was, I was absolutely desperate to be a mum. But I really wanted a couple of years at least clear under my belt of cancer, of course. Um, to make sure I was healthy enough to do it but I could not get my head around somebody else carrying our child for ages and because of that I knew it wasn't the right time and Tom thought that too. Uh, we actually met up with a, um, a surrogate that we met online, a potential surrogate who's ended up doing it for somebody else now um, because we didn't go ahead we just we just something held back held us back I don't know what it was and then eventually in 2021 two years after being married and me feeling good like I was about four or five nearly five years on from cervical cancer um I thought it's time I want to do it and I know exactly who I want to carry our baby and I won't go into that because that's just private we did all the counselling paid so much money um appointment after appointment after appointment everything was good to go um, my surrogate started taking a medication, getting a body ready for us to thaw my eggs, thaw Tom's sperm, because all that had been done um, sort of earlier on. Make the embryo and do a fresh transfer into our surrogate. So what I was expecting is that when they thawed my eggs, we could potentially have a positive pregnancy test within about 10 days. And that's what I was waiting for. Of course, I knew the chances of a positive outcome were slim. But I had hope, like I've always felt like I was meant to be a mum, so I thought, no, it's going to happen. We're going to get one baby. I got a phone call the day that they thawed my eggs and I just got told there and then on the phone, I'm really sorry, Helen, but when we did the thawing process, all of your eggs just died off. They didn't do anything. Um, so that was a massive door slammed in our faces. And after doing so much healing over feeling like, 
another woman can carry my child and I can deal with that and I'm strong enough to to be able to raise a child that won't be what can I say um too affected by the way that they were brought into this world like I'd put so much effort into it I thought I'm doing this the right way so it's got to work it didn't anyway if we do have children now um we will go down the adoption route um and that is something that we've never ruled out right from day one in fact before we went down the route of surrogacy Tom actually brought the conversation Helen should we put ourselves through this or should we adopt um, so I know he's always been open to it. I'll always be devastated that it didn't work out the way that we thought it would do. However, I do feel like now I'm in a really strong position in my mind where the whole fertility thing is. Because you can't waste your whole life wanting something that's just not going to happen. And I've put that to bed now. Um, so the answer to babies is uh, not right now, but never say never. And if we do, it will be adoption. Sorry, that was quite a long-winded answer, but it's quite a long-winded topic, that, for me. Um, the next question is, um, how are you feeling? I know that this question has sort of come off the back of me showing the news that we lost my stepdad um, back in September. Um, sort of a couple of months after I stopped filming, really. I'm not going to go into it too much, just because it... I don't feel, and this is why I've been um, avoiding talking about it because I just can't do it without crying. Grief in this capacity, I don't really know how to deal with it. And when I say stepdad, I use that term quite loosely because um, I don't want to get upset because I don't remember life without him in it um as long as I can remember my mum I can remember him he's always been there um and I have a super super close uh, knit family and um, it hit me honestly like a ton of bricks and I don't think I've even processed what's happened, let alone accepted it. It's absolutely heartbreaking and if anybody's been through it, I just want to send you a big hug because it's devastating, not only just for me, but for everybody else that loved him. I definitely feel like I must somehow be coming to terms with it because I feel like I want to film this video and it's that filming these videos is what I love doing in my spare time. For the last sort of few months, I've just been kind of sticking at, um, logging on to work every day, getting that done, getting my head down, getting through the day and just being okay. Um, but now I'm actually starting to enjoy the things that I used to enjoy. Um, so I think that that is good. And that was, that is 100% what you would want. Um, if I could just tell you what he was like, literally nobody else. That, that is exactly what he was like, nobody else. And I will miss him forever. I know I'll get there because I know he wouldn't want me to be like this. He 100%, he definitely wouldn't. I think I'm going to get some bereavement counselling. Um, my friend Jade lost her mum quite a few years ago now. And she's recommended it to me. She said, Helen, do it. And I'm definitely going to do it. Um, my mum thinks as well that I might need a bit of counselling. So I'm going to just do it. It definitely can't hurt. And counselling's always helped me in the past so I'm really sorry if if this is upsetting I just felt like I couldn't come back with just a vlog and act normal because I don't feel my old normal self D definitely don't get me wrong when I start talking about a topic something else I'll be okay so yeah let's talk about something else okay this one um, so happy for you that you're feeling excited about YouTube again I'd love to see an updated house tour thank you Rachel I I will definitely do an updated house tour. As you can see behind me, I haven't shown this on YouTube yet. This is my master bedroom. Um, I've definitely been more active on my Instagram and I've got loads of pictures of the master bedroom and ensuite and everything on there and the new wardrobes that we've had done. But I do, I do need to do a, um, an updated house tour. I think we're getting a decorator in um, for the spare bedroom because I think we've just had enough. <laughs> 
<laughs> we're going into three years of renovating now and we're just sick of seeing pain and we've held off a few months so that we can just get somebody in to help us with it um, and then we're slowing down like the main bathroom isn't new it's definitely not to my taste but it's staying in there for at least a good few years um and yeah we're just going to enjoy what we've done so far it, you can look at everything and pick it apart but at the end of the day <laughs> it's only where you live and i need to really focus on myself and my happiness this year so um getting covered in paint every weekend is just not like just not what i want to be doing i'm excited to start vlogging again doing hauls again um i've just started slimming world so i'm thinking of doing a weekly weigh-in video so at, le at least have one video a week going live along with other ones as well i, I want to get really stuck in this year so yeah i'm excited and i hope you'll watch next question holiday destination what is your ultimate holiday destination well we were supposed to be going to bali in covid and with the money that we got back from the holiday we bought connie <laughs> so i would like to go to bali still um there's a few places i'd love to go to i'd love to go to america tom's told me amazing things about that um he had he'd never been up until having this um, job which he started a year ago today actually he was like helen you have to come so yeah america probably would be where I want to go next. Uh, I think we're booking a, hol a family holiday um, with my mum and um, some of my siblings. I'm hoping quite a few of them can come to Mallorca. I loved Mallorca last time I went. We went to a place called, um, a Palen I call it Palenza, but it's Poyenza. Um, but it's Poyenza, I think is how you say it. And it was stunning. The beach was gorgeous. Um, it's definitely a couple a holiday, but quite a chilled one. There's not much nightlife there, but the restaurants are unreal and the beach is incredible. I would definitely recommend going there to anybody. Um, but we, we're thinking, we're looking at Calador, Calador in um, Mallorca at the moment. So let me know anybody in the comments if you've been there. Um, how is your health at the moment? Um, my health is... My mental health is a little bit iffy. I think grief has 100% done that to me. It wasn't great before all that happened, though, to be fair, especially because of the loss of my eggs and things like that. Just feels like it's been, like, one thing after another. I feel like I've not had chance to get over something bad that's happened before the next thing happens, and it can really mess with your anxiety, that, um, and put you on pins. But day-to-day, -day, I think I cope with that quite well. I would say depression is is more the thing for me at the minute but I am taking my HRT again which I know definitely helps me it's a bit of a cycle where when I'm down I don't look after myself so I don't take my medication or I forget to take my medication which ultimately makes me feel 10 times worse um Tom's ringing me one minute hello my valentine that sounds very aggressive. What do you say when you answer the phone? Hello, my Valentine. <laughs> Tom's not into Valentine's Day, if you can't guess. Hello? Sir? You okay? I thought I got through to the wrong person. I was trying to ring you, I just thought somebody else. Will you be my Valentine? <laughs> Will ya? No, I don't know what that means, but I don't want to be it. Give me bits and bobs. Your bits and your bobs, just. Mm. I've put lovely fresh bedding on. Lovely fresh bedding? Mm hmm. I'm getting a bit hungry, I might go and make my tea in a minute. What are you having? Told ya. Garlicky, prawny, pasta y thing. That sounds nice. Mmm. I'm going to put chilli, chilli, garlic, prawns, spaghetti. A tin of tomatoes, tomato puree, but like boil it down a bit to make like a pasta sauce. But I'm not going to put onion in it because what does Gino de Campo say? You don't need a garlic and onion. In the same Italian dish, correct. I've been waiting for the door to knock all day for my flower delivery, but it never came. <laughs> and you've been saying to me every I time we have an argument, you say. I can buy myself flowers. Every time I have an argument. 
I'm all the time then. You too. See you later. Alright, love you, bye. Bye Felicia, love you, bye. <laughs> what was I talking about? I was talking about my health. So, yeah, my mental health is a little bit iffy at the minute, but it kind of always is. I feel like the last time I was in a really, really good patch was the last time I was doing Slimming World and really focusing on something other than the things that were going on in my life that I couldn't control. Um, and... That brings me on to saying that I have started my um, Slimming World journey. I joined up with my mum at group on Saturday, I've just gone, so I'm about four days in and I'm really, really enjoying it so far. Granted, it's only been four days, so we'll see how I get on, but so far, so good. It's it's lifted me this week, really, really has lifted me, given me something to focus on. I've been loving writing in my little food diary. There were some really nice people at the group. Uh, ultimately that's going to improve my health because I'm feeling a bit sluggish at the moment. I had a meeting with my oncology team about a month ago um, to do with my waterworks because my bladder is just like, I don't know what's happened in the last six months but um, I'm having a lot of trouble with my bladder and I've got kind of mixed symptoms. So I've got this urgency thing but then I've also got this thing where I'm not f feeling like my bladder's properly empty. Um, and it's yeah it's it's really uncomfortable and it's and it's getting me down a little bit so I went and saw my oncology team and um, there were just a few things that she's told me to change make some lifestyle choices I've got to cut out caffeine completely so I've reduced my caffeine intake massively um, I've stopped drinking fizzy drinks that contain caffeine and I've stopped my coffee which yeah my nice coffee machine I've stopped drinking those coffees I'm now on decaf instant coffee um and I kind of treat myself to a to a normal coffee at the weekend and that's working for me at the minute I also did dry jam but I didn't lose a single pound whilst I was doing dry jam I don't know how because wine surely contains loads of calories so I thought I would have lost a little bit of weight but no um, and I'm really enjoying not drinking. I poured myself a glass of wine the other day. I actually put it on my Instagram story to say dry jam was over. I took a couple of sips and I threw it away. I didn't even want it. So yeah, I'm really enjoying not drinking as much. Um, getting back into healthy eating. I definitely need to up my exercise. I've actually put my Peloton bike in the bedroom. It's staring at me. I've got to walk past it every morning. But have I been on it? No. Uh, I've actually got a hospital appointment on Thursday to see um, a urologist at the Christie. He specialises in bladder problems after cancer treatment, so he really knows what he's doing. He wants me to pass urine on this special machine that looks at your flow rate, um, because I don't know why, but sometimes I can be passing urine for like three or four minutes at a time, um, which is obviously not normal um, in any capacity. It's definitely not normal for me. I need to have a ultrasound on my abdomen and my kidneys to make sure everything's working right with them and then if he's still a bit like don't know what's going on don't know why you're getting these symptoms he'll then want to have a look with a camera i got lots of of how i use which was so nice because obviously i, I put the news about my stepdad on my instagram everyone on my instagram just sent me kind messages um i got messages from people that know what it's like um to be going through this at the minute never had a massive following on any of my social medias but i am so thankful that the people that do follow me are such nice people and the last question is any more house plans so tom wants to focus on the garden this year but we're not planning on spending money on the house this year really uh, other than having some decorating done in the bedrooms and getting those finished i also want um a picture that i've seen for that wall we need curtains in this bedroom what else needs doing in here i need some storage for my wardrobes and things like that so it's just some last minute touches in here and a bit of the paintwork that needs sorting out and then we're finished in here but the other bedrooms need new radiators all the woodwork doing um they've all been plastered now but they all need painting and decorating and being made into bedrooms because right now we're not utilizing the space that we've got um one thing i will say as well is uh, when we moved into this house it was december 2020 and the surrogacy plans were well underway then so the part of the reason why we moved here 
is so that we don't ever have to move again because it's big enough but it was because I thought that we'd be having babies so um right now even though this house isn't it's it's a four bedroom house but it doesn't feel massive to me probably because we're not using half of it um but it's not one of those houses where we feel like two marbles rolling around and we don't know like what we're going to do and how we're going to fill those bedrooms the, the the small bedroom is going to because we've already got an office downstairs the small bedroom is going to be my peloton room i'm going to have one mirror on the full wall have peloton have the peloton in there some weights and some like gym stuff in there <laughs> i'm ever gonna go in there like hopefully i will do when it's like nice i've just got to get some more to it like i need a rocket up my ass at this point i'm so lazy when it comes to exercise it's untrue and then um this bedroom next to us here which is the second biggest one will be a guest bedroom i'm going to get some more wardrobes put in there because we need a bit more storage space and then the other bedroom, which is a smaller bedroom, would have been a baby's bedroom had our plans um, had our plans materialised. I will definitely do a house tour again very soon. What I really want to do this year, if anybody would be interested in seeing videos like this, whilst I've been head all over the show, not my normal self, even though that kitchen is quite brand new, I've let things really go in terms of like my organisation and you know what I was like at the beginning, labels on everything, everything like perfect. <laughs> That's not what it looks like now. So I might do some videos of getting myself back on track, looking after my mental health, doing the things that I know make me feel better because having things tidy definitely has an effect on my mental health. Um, but for the last couple of for the last few weeks at least um i've just been very much like finishing work so tired from not sleeping properly because of all these issues with my bladder to then just waiting for love island to come on and eating shit in the in the meantime like and not looking after my body or taking notice of what i'm putting into it so i've also documented some slimming world stuff over on tiktok as well which is also the same name as this channel um, so follow me on uh, Instagram and TikTok if you don't already. Let me know on the quality of this video as well. Is it better than my old camera? I've upgraded, so I actually haven't spent that much on this. I managed to sell my old camera on um, on eBay for about £60 less than I paid for it. Um, but I just wanted to switch things up a little bit this year and um, make the quality of my videos a bit better. Uh, especially for vlogging as well. Like There was nothing worse than going in B&M with a big friggin' thing that looked like, with a big thing that looked like a camcorder. Like, I must have looked like a right weirdo. Um, whereas this is like really compact and good for vlogging, so I'll be out and about in all the shops and things like that, especially over Easter. Love Easter for filming vlogs when all the little ducklings come onto the drive and everything. <laughs> Exciting. How can a mood be, do a 360 like mine do? That's menopause for you people. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave any more questions in the comments down below or send them over to my Instagram. Maybe I'll do a part two. And um, yeah, I'll see you very soon. Mwah.